Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel ML for Analytics. In this particular video, we will be creating a KPI matrix in Power BI using tabular editor. So I just want to tell you that uh, a feature that is external tools, this was added in July 2020 update in Power BI Desktop. So you will need to install tabular editor first uh, in order to perform this particular demo that I will be covering in this video. So I'll provide the link uh, for downloading this uh, particular uh, you can say software in the description box below. So uh, you can install it on your machine also. So uh, first of all, uh, let me go through the case scenarios that we will be covering in this video. So my idea is to actually create a KPI uh, as an I actually won't know uh, the performance of, uh, of a measure that is average sales amount. I, I want to actually make a matrix with product category name on the rows and E year on the columns and I just want to know the trend uh, how uh, how uh, the, the KPI is performing uh, how my particular measure is performing so I want to know the trend I want to know the present status uh, and all these things uh, so this is what I will be covering in this particular video so again uh, the the database that I'm using is Contrasol. The tables are uh, DIM date, DIM product, DIM product category, and DIM product subcategory. And yeah, tax sales, obviously. So let's get started. So first of all, I'll need to create a measure that is overall average sales amount. So this is overall average sales amount. And what I'll be uh, using uh, is average X function in this case. I will be iterating over fact sales table and I will be actually, uh, you know, uh, I will be actually averaging uh, sales amount. And here I will be using all function on fact sales. So this gives me the overall average sales amount as in no filter context will be able to, you, you know, uh, no filter context will be applied on this particular measure because all is present in this case. Now, the second measure that I will be creating is only average sales amount. Uh, so the same way uh, I created overall average sales amount, but yeah, I will, be, I will not be using all function in this case. So yeah, this is also done, cool enough. Now, after, cre after creating this, I will be going to external tools and I will be clicking on tabular editor. Great. Uh, so, now uh, what I'll be doing is I will be expanding the stable section and I will be expanding back sales because uh, in this particular table only I have created these two measures. So, I will be clicking on average sales amount. I will be uh, right clicking on this I'll go to create new and here yeah, I'll click on KPI so once you do this uh, I will actually let you see it once I do this and I save the changes to the connected database you will be able to see just a sec. You will be able to see that uh, average sales amount in Fabia Distrop that if this measure is having this you can say kind of traffic lights in front of it right so once you expand this you will be able to see three values uh, as in uh, the three indicators associated to it one is or you can say actually aspects one is value the other one is goal and third one is status, right? So now we will be actually covering each of them. Uh, and before that, I will be bringing this overall average sales amount over here. 
I will be converting this visual into a card visual and yeah, I'll go over here and I will change the display units to none and here yeah, decimal uh, places to zero. Yeah, that's fine with me, right? So this becomes the overall average sales amount. Unit is Indian rupees, which is yeah, fine with me, right? So I will also be doing one more thing, that is I will be bringing the product category name uh, from this table, uh, that is DIM product category table, and I will be bringing uh, calendar year from this particular table, yeah, and after this, I will be converting this to into a matrix visual calendar year in column. The last thing that is left is obviously values. So yeah, I will be expanding this average sales amount and I will be clicking on value over here. So this thing is done, right? Now the next thing, the next step is to go to tabular editor over here. And as you can see, I have many expressions associated with this particular KPI. So first of all, let us target the target expression itself, which is the goal. So the goal is simple, that is the overall average uh, sales amount, right? For me, for you, the goal may be different. I will be ex uh, up, uh, clicking on accept changes, and yeah, I will again click on save the changes to the connected database. After this, if you click on this visual and if you click on goal over here, you can see that it is reflecting the same goal, that is 3, 6, 4, 4.5. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me go over here and change the value decimal places to 2 for, for, for convenience, right? So the goal is simple. So, yeah, I don't want this over here. Rather, I want status and trend. So first of all, let me go to status expression. The status expression is uh, something that I will be creating right now. I will be creating a variable which is the average sales and yeah, it will be again average sales amount, right? So this is done. The second variable is going to be threshold right and for me the threshold is going to be 500 the third variable which I will be creating over here it is going to be yeah uh, overall average sales which is again uh, overall average sales amount so this is also created now what I'll be going into is, I will obviously, uh, where involves return. So there is one return statement associated with uh, variables in each DAX expression. You can use multiple variables in a DAX expression, but the return statement is going to be just one. So in return, I will be using this. I will be uh, actually uh, checking a condition that is if not is blank is blank what uh, so uh, this average sales if average sales is not blank then what then I will be applying uh, a switch condition over here and what I will be doing in this case is obviously I will let it loop over this particular, you know, uh, this true is uh, applied on switch so that it actually will be iterating on all of the values of the visual. So after this, what I want to check is, uh, let me actually do one more thing. I overall, if overall average sales is greater than average sales, minus threshold 
convert then minus 1 will be returned if overall average sales is less than average sales minus threshold then yeah 1 will be returned in this case else 0 will be returned right so this becomes my status expression so yeah i will click on accept changes and i'll click on save the changes to the connected database i'll once again go to power bi desktop and i will enable status over here so as you can see this has been enabled over here right so this has been enabled so what i am now going to do is again you can see it is numerical minus one in status minus one one all these uh, are returned but i want a graphical representation for this so i'll go to status graphic uh, over here and i will enable say traffic light graphic and here i'll again click on save the changes to the connected database so this is how it is represented over here so yeah uh, cool enough now the uh, goal is ready uh, status is ready the next thing is obviously trend so I will go to trend expression over here first of all I'll actually copy this itself and I will go to trend expression I will be actually uh, comparing present year's trend with the previous year's trend. So if the present year is 2008, the previous year is obviously going to be 2007. So if the present year sales are greater than previous year sales, it's green for me. If not, it's red for me. And if it's equal, then yeah, it's, it's just zero. So uh, first of all, average sales is going to remain the same. Uh, threshold is not applicable in this particular case the this will be previous year sales and which i will be doing is i will be using calculate in this case calculate and yeah i will be uh, the expression is obviously average sales amount and uh, the the you can say the filter modifier that I will be using over here is previous year function over here and this will be what this will be uh, dim date and again it will be calendar year right so this is how it's going to work and in the if statement I will be applying one more condition over here if average sales is not not blank and and what is not blank uh, previous year sales this should also not be blank if this condition is fulfilled then what I am going to do is if average sales are greater than oh sorry uh, let me use this instead previous year sales are greater than average sales then it's minus one if previous year sales are less than the average sales then it's obviously plus one otherwise it's going to be zero so this is also cool let me apply this over here let me click on save the changes to the connected database and if i go over here and if i enable as you can see trend is not visible over here this is a limitation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this fields pane and I'm going to show this fields pane will expand this back sales table I'll expand this average sales amount over here and yeah uh, okay uh, just a sec so yeah I think this was not saved now I'll uh, hide this, expand this, and I'll expand this itself. 
So now trend is visible over here. So I'll check on this. Okay, it's not visible right now. So let us see what has happened over here. Why this particular thing is popping up over here. So, okay. Let us choose one thing. Uh, I'm using calendar year over here. Instead, I should use date key over here right so this should be because uh, previous year will be applied on date and date key is the date in dimension date table i'll click on accept changes and again apply these changes if i go over here now you can see uh, for for the first year that is 2007 uh, the trend is blank why because 2007 is the first year in our case and there's no year previous to 2007. 2006 was not present right now. But in case of 2008, trend is having these values. In case of uh, 2009 also, trend is having these values. But yeah, uh, it's presently 1 and minus 1. So I've, I want to use graphic in this case. So what I'll go, I'll do is I'll go to trend graphic over here and I will select say variance arrow in this case and I'll go, I'll click on save the changes to the connected database. So as you can see, uh, this is done right now. Now, as you can see, by default, what uh, what uh, this does is tabular editor and power bi they actually add measure name and then status measure name then trend which we obviously do not want so we will go over here and uh, either we can like double click on this measure and we will uh, modify the names and in the same way I will go over here and I'll modify the status also, status name also. So now this looks perfectly fine. So this is how uh, it's visible for me. Uh, and yeah, it, uh, it is having the status with the trend, which is the thing that I wanted. So guys, uh, with this, I conclude this video. I hope you found this informative. If you did, uh, please like this video. Uh, let us know about your feedback by commenting. Uh, share this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.